Hello everyone. Today I'm going to take you through a quick example of how to use calculation groups in Power BI. So say for example you want to include some kind of time intelligence in this file. For example, year to date, quarter to date, month to date, things like that. Normally you would have to create a lot of measures, you know, basically one measure for every example that you wanted. Um, rather than doing that, you can actually use a calculation group which allows you to do it once and it'll apply to your entire your entire file. So in this example, I've got a Power BI desktop file called sales, and it's got one table called sales. It's got a few different columns in here. It's got person, price, and quantity, and then a couple of example measures that I've created. So let's create a calculation group for scale factor. Let's say we want to basically add a slicer that will change all these measures between unrounded thousands, millions, and billions. Go ahead and go up to external tools and open up tabular editor. That's the external tool you're going to be using to create the calculation group. So we open that up and you can see it automatically connects to your model sales.pbix. And on the left hand side, if we click on tables, you can see our one table called sales. Now to create the actual calculation group, you're going to want to right click on tables and hit create new calculation group. And let's call this calculation group scale factor. Now we've got the uh, calculation group created, but now we, we need to actually create the calculation items. So right click on scale factor, create new calculation item. This is going to be the DAX behind it. And this is essentially what you want the DAX for the calculation item to be. So let's start off with unrounded. Let's say we just want it to be the actual selected measure involved. And down below, there's a few other pieces of information you can put in. So description, the name of it, the ordinal is just the order of it, any kind of error messages, the actual expression, and then the string expression. So for selected measure, we pretty much just want the measure to be itself, and that's for unrounded. We don't want any changes. Let's create another calculation item. And for this one, let's do thousands. So we do, if the item contains the string percent sign, oops, item contains this, the sign percent sign, then just do the measure itself. Otherwise, do the measure divided by 1,000. Now, essentially, what we're saying is if the measure contains a percent sign, opt out of this calculation group. Otherwise, divide the measure by 1,000. So we'll rename this as well. Call this thousands. Create two more calculation items, one for millions, and then one for billions. Okay. So we've got our four calculation items created. Now when we're ready to go, you pretty much just hit the save icon up here and it'll save your changes to your file. So I've hit save, minimize this for now, and you can see on the top, it gives you a little banner here saying one or more calculation groups need to be manually refreshed. If we just hit refresh now, you can actually see the scale factor table appear now. So if we click on the slicer icon and pull up the scale factor calculation group, you can see there's four options in here. These are the two measure columns. It's total sales and quantity per price. So if I click on unrounded, nothing happens. Like I said, I wanted it to just do the selected measure. If I click on thousands, it's now dividing those by a thousand. Millions, this is in millions. And then billions, this is in billions. So you can see how this would be a pretty useful concept if you had to recreate you know, some kind of intel time intelligence or scale factor for hundreds of different measures. It can essentially save you hours and hours of time. Uh, so it's a very useful concept. So thanks everyone for listening.